Hello everyone, my name is Ed N. Jihangir, and today we're going to be talking about Outpost 24's SWAT solution and how we can use PowerShell to leverage the API that is made available for free for any Outpost 24 user and take the information provided by the SWAT team and put it into Jira Cloud. Now, this script that I've written for PowerShell it is workable for internal Jira deployments, such as Jira server. But in this example, we're going to be talking strictly about cloud. So let's get started. As you can see here, I have two windows open. I have Google Chrome running my Atlassian account slash Jira cloud. And in here, I also have a tab for Outpost 24. And this is our new user interface for AppSec. And you can see in here that we have our SWAT applications. They have some vulnerabilities on them. And we're able to view things like the executive summary that uh, the SWAT team handwrites. In addition to that, they're providing handwritten recreation flows, impacts, and descriptions as well as solutions for each of the findings that they will provide. Now, obviously this information is really handy, but in order to make good use of it, it's very helpful to have a ticketing solution like JIRA. And so the purpose here is to show you how easy it is to move this information directly into JIRA cloud. So I'm gonna go back over here and you'll see in the provided link a uh, package that includes, at this time, three different files. I'm not going to show you the files in this video, but if you'd like, you can go ahead and inspect them. They're just text files that are scripts for uh, PowerShell to run. And I'm going to show you a simple method for executing those scripts. So if you run this command, on its own, it's going to ask you for the basics in terms of the information provide, or to provide uh, for where it's going to route these tickets. In this case, it's asking for my Jira user, which is just my email address. The password. In this case, it's going to be the API key associated with your Jira cloud instance. Project is going to be this value here. So we see that this project is called TUR. And now it's trying to get the information for Outpost 24. So let me provide that as well. All right, so now it's queried Outpost 24 through the RESTful API to get all of our tickets. And it's providing those within JIRA as tickets. And it's identifying that these are new tickets and these are not updates from existing tickets. So it's also providing those ticket IDs as well as uh, issue details. Just refresh this page. And we see now that these have shown up in our uh, TUR pro uh, project under the new column. I'm going to select one of these items and show you what the description field contains. As you can see, it's copied and pasted all of that information, as well as the finding ID, which is a unique identifier for each of your findings within the Outpost 24 platform up here. And so if we look for this ID, could actually go down here and remote file inclusion. Is that the right one? 130767542. Yep. And so we see that it's copied and pasted these information over, including the recreation flow solution and a link directly to this finding. I can actually copy and paste that. Bam. 
So this makes it super easy for your development team to take the information directly out of Outpost 24's platform using the API, which again is provided for free. And taking that information into your JIRA cloud instance and allowing you to keep track of these issues in a easy manner using JIRA as part of your normal workflow. Now, in addition to this, I've created some logic in here that will help with maintenance. And in fact, this script is not intended to be run just once. It's intended to be run perhaps any day or any time. And the way that that is handled is essentially each of these unique identifiers for our findings. These are going to be checked against these issues here. So as long as these issues aren't out edited to no longer reflect the correct uh, ID value, then these will maintain being updated. And let me show you what that looks like. But first, I also want to show you another nice feature, which is that these, these items can even be moved into other projects. Now, I've moved over to the advanced search function in order to display how this will look with the advanced search view, which is a little bit more uh, in depth. And this also allows me to manipulate where these pro where these items are and which projects they're included in. For example, remote file inclusion, which is the finding that we've been focusing on. I'm going to move this over to another project. Okay, and so now we see that this item is in new project. And just to illustrate that what that looks like in the simplified view, we see that that item is no longer in here. And in fact, if I go to new project, it's here. So now we have all of the findings within JIRA. But we know that these items may change. They may be closed. They may be reopened. It's possible that uh, a finding could be fixed and then a couple of weeks later a, uh, a mistake in builds causes that finding to reopen. And when that happens, that's what this unique identifier here ID is for. Because the SWAT team, if they find a new flaw, they will create a new finding with a new ID, which will result in a new JIRA ticket. However, if they have a old finding that they deem worth reopening, then the JIRA representation of that should reflect the latest status. And so let me demonstrate here how the maintenance of this script works. Now, to illustrate an example of when data changes, I'm going to change this issue here, reflected cross-site scripting, and I'm going to manipulate the fixed value to say that it is true. And let me uh, quickly let you know, it's going to look a little weird, but that's all fine. I'm not really sure why Jira does this, but it'll get fixed. This is just to show what it looks like when something changes. So we've changed that value, but we know that this is actually not true. It's not fixed. So I'm going to go back over to PowerShell. Let me clear this view. And we're going to run the script once again. All right. And so now we see that it's done the same thing as it did the last time, except it's identified that only one item has changed. The other remain unchanged. Let's go, this is 393. Refresh this view and check out 393 again. All right, and we see that it has reset the formatting on this and it has reset fixed to show that it is again false. And so the purpose of this is to illustrate that when this value changes, it'll be because it changed here. And so you can run this script every day or multiple times a day, and it will update the tickets in here within JIRA. And to illustrate how that works, even if you have separated the, the findings, such as a remote file inclusion, 
it'll still update correctly for both now that this finding has been placed in the correct queue. So remote file inclusion, and then go back over to Turk Smash. Reflected cross-site scripting. One more time. All right, so we see both reflected cross-site scripting and remote file inclusion have been updated. Open this up, we see that it's fixed. Go to new project. And we see this is fixed as well. And so the purpose of this again is to, is to show that after the initial onboarding phase of just creating the issues, like I showed before, you can continue to run this script any number of times and it will maintain the existing tickets for any of the existing findings. Um, one final thing I wanted to mention is that every one of these input options is available to be used as a uh, command line argument. So for example, you could do something like this, dot slash your uh, URI you just copy and paste the rest of them all right and you see that obviously it hasn't changed anything because there's nothing to change it didn't mess with with the uh, findings this time so um, thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at e -jihangir, or sorry, eci at outpost24.com or the email address listed in here, uh, ejihangir89 at yahoo.com. Again, that's eci at outpost24.com or ecihangir89 at yahoo.com. And I can help uh, with you know, any troubleshooting questions you have for this. And again, uh, this is something that will be building on and improving as time goes. So uh, your feedback is, is much appreciated. Uh, thanks for listening.